Hey guys, welcome to another Cigar Chat brought to you live on CigarFederation.com. Broadcasting around the world in the Arc Horses Radio Network. Thank you for tuning in wherever you are. <clears throat> Excuse me, out there in the world today. Uh, Robbie Raz here with you as always, Cigar Federation. We got Logan, <clears throat> the freshly painted. Don't check your e freaking emails right when the show starts, bro. Bro, I was starting the timer, man. Bro. Bro. <laughs> bro. <laughs> Come on, man, bro. I, I want to show off everyone my fancy new duds that I got in here. What do you got? Air purifier. Dun, 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 dun. Does Even it work? There you go. An ionizer. Can you not Does hear that thing? Yeah. Hear that? Uh, yeah. When you, when you get it all up in your grill, yeah, we can Dude, hear it. It's amazing how much – I mean, I've got the fart fan going, but it's amazing how less smoky it is in here with that thing running. So when you say an ionizer, now, since we've, we've been talking we've, a lot we've about – We've had conversations about O3 been, lately. We've been talking a lot about science. What the hell is an ionizer? So exactly. apparently and I'm, <laughs> an ionizer is something that produces ozone, Ions. which is O3, if you know a little bit about chemistry. And this one is actually <laughs> – rated safe for pets, babies, and humans. It will not, like the unit you have, Rob, that mm -hmm. could kill you. Yeah. Um, this one will actually only produce enough ozone, which won't kill you. Well, I, you know, when I'm, when I'm going ozone, when I'm producing ozone, I'm going full ozone. I don't mess around. You're going full O3? I'm, I'm willing to take that chance, <laughs> man. I'm willing to take it. No, it's, it's, uh, it's, it's funny. Um, I plug it in and, and at night, and it's this tiny little thing. And I plug it in at night. I'll turn it on, and I'll like slam the door and run out of the room before it, anything happens. Then every time I come in in the morning to open up the office, I take a deep breath. I hold my breath. I run in. I open all the windows, turn all the fans, and get out. I'm afraid of it, but uh, I'm I'm still I'm still living, and it really does eat up all the smell. <laughs> but uh, anyway, that's not really what we're here to talk about. No, uh, we're here to talk about taboo cigars. We've got uh, Young joining us from Taboo. Thanks for taking the time, man. Appreciate it. Oorah. Dude, that sounded scary as crap. <laughs> you know, it's from all my, uh, all the military guys who are doing the firewatch right now. Wait, and, and you're, uh, you're former military, right? Yes, sir. Marine. Navy and Marines. Navy Two and Marines. Two C bag and one paycheck. Oh wow. Two C bags and one paycheck. I was a hospital corpsman for the Greens. Wow. The nine one one, you know. Wow, that's. Uh, I don't think. I know we've had we've had. Uh, Former military on the show before. I don't think we've ever had anybody who's uh, who served in, in two branches. So, no. Um, that's, uh, I'm sure you've got some pretty good stories. We can get into those later, maybe. Um, yeah. So I, you're actually right down the street from me. You're at uh, Casa Bella Costa, which is my local lounge. And I was going to try to head down there and uh, do the show live with you, but I just couldn't. Uh, I couldn't break away earlier in the afternoon. But uh, that's a great shop that they've got over there. I say, great yeah. hospitality. Always, always, mm -hmm. always great hospitality. Yeah, they do a good job down there. Really nice lounge. If you're ever in the San Francisco Bay Area, you got to check out Costa Bella Costa and Walnut Creek. Um, yes, look for Bird. He's a really tall, skinny guy. You can't miss him. Um, <clears throat> former basketball player. Didn't he play for the Globetrotters or something to that effect? Yeah, he played Globetrotter. Yeah, we're, 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 we're putting all of his, uh, his laundry out there. We'll have to... <laughs> <laughs> I have to be careful what I say now. <laughs> yeah, no kidding. No, no, Bird's a good guy. Um, so tell us a little bit about, uh, you know, we again, thank you for being flexible. We were supposed to have you on last week, but Logan had uh, a case of whatever <laughs> the hell. and uh, You mean and, he had a case of H1N1 uh, chicken flu. Yeah, something like that. Yeah, but you, Chicken you, flu, you, dude. <laughs> it's bird flu, huh? <laughs> chicken ain't no bird. Chicken flu. Chick, the chicken's, a chicken's not a bird? No, man. <laughs> <laughs> it ain't flying. It ain't a bird. Oh, we're off to a good start. Um, there you so, go. So, Young, give us some background on Taboo. I mean, you guys, it's a new brand, uh, you know, well, new to, new to me anyway. Uh, Absolutely. It's got three, different, uh, three different lines out of the market, so give us some of the background. <clears throat> Pretty much I used the uh, military okay. kiss system, you know, the rule of threes and the kiss system. Three blends, three sizes. Keep it simple. Mild, medium, and full. Did my, my market's research. The bronze, okay, I used three color, two coated, too. Bronze, silver, and gold, just like the Olympic. You know, you got bronze. Doesn't mean it's in third place. Yeah. Bronze pretty much tell you that it's a mild cigar. So the, with the mild cigar, it represents bronze, silver, going to be your medium, and then the gold will be your full body. And when I created the cigar, it's pretty much, how can I say, it? the last straw that broke the camel's back, as they would say, was uh -huh. I've made a lot of money for so many different manufacturers. Why can't I make it for myself? 
and this go. is my end game. This is my end game, meaning when I first started in this industry, this is what I wanted to do. In those last 10 years, I've just been a complete student of the art. I just want to be a student. From the floor to the store, that's what I wanted to learn. From so, the floor to the store, I love it. You're, you're like, yeah. uh, you're very poetic, man. This is... <laughs> <laughs> you know, you're, po it's, you're like you got poetic answers. You're just sitting in the dark. Like I'm waiting for some slow jazz to kick in. And just <laughs> Welcome. <laughs> yeah. the, mid the midnight slow jazz. We're here uh, right now. What? So uh, so I've got uh, I've got the the blends here that, that uh, I know you, you emailed all that information over to me, and I'm gonna pull it up here in a quick second. If right. you guys will bear with me, because I know that we've got like you said three different. Where did I put that email? <clears throat> Look at me, Logan. I'm not. Uh, I mean, I'm, I'm not. not I'm not surprised. I mean, if anyone out there is surprised, well, I got you've it. Never so, watched the show. Yeah. No. No kidding. Right. Yeah. I'm. I'm definitely Mr. Preparedness. Um, so we've got the bronze. Uh, that's got the Ecuadorian sun-grown Connecticut wrapper, Dominican binder, um, Creo, uh, Criollo 98, and HBA Seco in the filler. Uh, the silver, and that's actually what I'm smoking here today. I'm smoking the silver. Uh, so you guys can take a look at that. And we'll talk about the artwork on the band here in a little bit, because it's really cool. Um, Absolutely. Silver is the uh, Ecuadorian Sumatra Dominican binder, uh, Dominican and Nicaraguan fillers. The gold, that's more of the medium to full body. Ecuadorian Habano wrapper, which I'm a big fan of. Um, Dominican binder, HBA Lajero, uh, Criollo 98 Seco in the filler. So that's... Uh, <clears throat> there's a lot of different things going on in those blends. Now... Where uh, where are the cigars made? What country are they coming out of? They're coming out of from the Dominican, and the reason why I chose Dominican is a selfish reason. Matter of fact, and Logan kind of touched point on that earlier. I chose Dominican because first and foremost, if I'm planning to take my clients and my customers to a country, why not Dominican? You know, it has beautiful resorts, great golf courses, and it's safe. And now I've traveled enough through Central America. You go to Honduras and Nicaragua, you're, you're, you're tossing a coin, let's just say. <laughs> you know? Well, you know, from that standpoint, I mean, I've been down in Nicaragua. I know Logan has. It's, um, it's no went, problem. Yeah, we went on kind of an organized trip, so I always felt very comfortable yeah. uh, with. But, I mean, you're, you're taking a chance when you're going, really, when you travel anywhere, you're taking a chance. But, yeah. Um, no, I, I've but. heard that the, uh, the Dominican is, is beautiful. It was one of the places uh, my wife and I went on a... Uh, <clears throat> went to a, a resort in Mexico not uh, this past year, it was a year before. And one of the places we were really looking at going was uh, was the Dominican. There's some really great resorts in uh, uh, Santiago, I think. Um, oh, absolutely. So, yeah, so that's the, you can definitely see. I know one of the guys on the site, Logan, I think it's Jared. Uh, yep. Grill it. Grill it. Talking, yeah, he's always talking about the Dominican. He went down there on a trip, and he and his wife loved it. So, um, I'm, I'm almost about to get an apartment down there. Just, you're, you're just going to say, screw it, and move down there, huh? Oh, I want to live down there, just enough to go back and forth. Oh, okay, I see. <clears throat> I see. It's, it's absolutely stunning. I mean, it's lush, it's green, plenty plenty to do, and you're, it's fairly safe. It's fairly... Yeah, that's. I, I've heard that uh, <clears throat> that it's, it's really nice, and it's definitely on the list of places that I do want to visit. I got um, a question, because but... you're talking about how these cigars are your end game. And I think you're the first person I've ever heard that said they were planning on trying to get rich from making cigars. Everyone says, don't get in the cigar business if, you're, if you want. You plan on actually making a living for yourself. What did you do before the 10 years from the floor to the shore flow up, or whatever you said that was really eloquent? Um, what did you do? Were you managing, were you a tobacconist? Were you working for brands as a sales rep? What were you doing? He gone. Well, pretty much all the above. I started okay. with a cigar lounge. And, and that's also started as a, a distributor and a not so good manufacturer to some very top manufacturer. And I started with them. All right. I'll give you an example. I started with Pepin when he was just a roller at uh, Tropical. Oh, wow. Hmm. All right. So uh, I've had, I became a student with all these different manufacturers, learning what not to do and what to do. Uh, I've made a lot of money for all these manufacturers, but my thought process was when his um, career is over. At best, he gets 
call his own, nothing to leave, you know, behind for his kids. Yes, it is a challenge. It's very competitive this industry, but you know, I came in there's this game knowing what I wanted, you know, fully trained in it. Just like a marine and, and you know, military, we're trained to do what we do. We don't just go in it blindly. You yeah. go to boot camp first. Well. So yeah, I think we're having some we're having a little bit of connection issues. Uh, hopefully that'll uh, that'll clean up as we move along. Um, so <clears throat> so we've got you come out. You know, so when did, when did the cigars actually come out? They came out you know the middle of the year last year, correct? Or uh, I tried. I tried. Uh, Rob, I I tried to come. But uh, well, I um, there's a saying in uh, you know in Central America, mañana, mañana, yeah. <laughs> mañana always means one of two things: tomorrow or whenever. Whenever or I feel like never. it. Never. Exactly. So, shit happens. You know, it happens. Yeah. So, um, so when did uh, when did so everything... I... oh go ahead? Everything hit the market kind of late oh, so last I... year. Yeah. I... I anticipated, you know, I anticipated, you know, the hiccups. I anticipated, you know, things going to happen. So I was very patient, waited for, you know, all the hiccups to iron out. It didn't, I, it didn't get to me until mid-November. Not a great time to uh, go and visit shop. Not a great time to try to get your cigars out. No worries. I'll wait until after the holidays. Uh, I have a completely different business plan. I'm not trying to get my cigar everywhere and anywhere. I don't want my cigar inside Bevmo. I don't want my cigars in Chevron gas station. That's not my interest, you know. <laughs> a cigar it should be truly enjoyed at a cigar lounge. I don't want my cigar even at the cash and carry, you know. You take it. There's no relationship. You and I and everybody who truly enjoys cigar, we understand the reason why we enjoy cigar is the camaraderie. You know, the cigar itself, that's just an instrument. That's a, that's a common denominator of what we do. It's the relationship. Bottom line is, I want to continue to be in this um, business because of the relationship. I don't have a four generation of history and heritage of um, being a cigar person, and I can't be pretentious. I am what I am. I am who I am. You know, I love cigar, but overall, I actually love the people more. Yeah, it's you know, it, it really is a good industry. I mean, and we talk about this a lot. You can be at a at the local lounge, and you're sitting next to a guy who's a a billionaire, and you wouldn't even know it if you don't know who he is. You know, and you're just everybody's kind of on an even, on an even playing field when you're you're sitting there in the lounge, and you're all enjoying a cigar. There's that common interest. Um, yeah, it's funny sure. that you. Oh, go ahead. So basically, you just called cigars a commodity. You know, you said all kinds of cigars are the same. What's different is, you know. So let me ask you. I mean, a lot of times, you know, you can get people to try a cigar once because of the personality. I mean, what's what's different about your company or your brand that's going to keep them coming back for that second, third, fourth, fifth, hundredth cigar? For, for any cigar smoker is the experience, the flavor, you know, the construction, everything that's objective, you know, how well it draws, how well it's constructed. And then, of course, you want to have complexity of flavor. So that's important. You know, am I going to have a lot of competition? Absolutely. But I'm going to have to honestly tell you, I've studied and I wrote my business plan based on everybody else's weaknesses, and that's going to be my strength. There's a lot of Cubans out there that are great cigar rollers and blenders and massive, you know, they make great cigars, but they can't even get to the market. Why? Why? You know, you have to ask that question. Why can't they get to the market? They have no personality. They don't know, they don't understand the American market. They're not willing to go and shake hands. So that has been my thought process of why I believe I will have a better chance. Look at Rocky. You know, I have to say I admire Rocky Patel. You know, when he had Indian tobacco, everybody's like, you know, with the last name Patel, why? You know, Indian tobacco. Yeah. You know what I admire about that man? He works very hard. He wanted to make sure he shook everyone's hand and make sure everyone tried his cigar. Look at where he stands today. It's, yeah, that's a, I mean, that's a valid point. Um, you know, like Logan said, it's easy to get somebody to smoke your cigar once, but, you know, to get them to come back uh, and, and smoke it again and again, and it, it, like you said, it is a combination of things. It's a combination of the experience that I have, and, you know, and if if I'm in a shop and I'm meeting that, uh, the, 
the brand ambassador or you know the guy who blended it. And uh, like Ezra Zion, for example, I'll use them as an example. It's the first time I smoked their cigars. I met him in person at a uh, mm-hmm. at a, a show that was or not a show at a uh, an event locally in Sacramento. And I it was it ended up being uh, a quick event. You know, there wasn't a, it wasn't a ton of traffic. It was on like a Wednesday or something. And uh, the shop just wasn't getting a lot of traffic that day. And me and a couple of my buddies ended up hanging out with them the whole time that we were there, basically, for three or four hours. Smoked three or four cigars, hung out with them, you know, and uh, just BS for a while. And, and after that, I mean, you build a certain relationship. It's a big relationship business, right? So I'm always going to go back Absolutely. and smoke whatever it is that they come out with and, and reach for their cigars just on a personal level because I like them as people. There you know, you go. So there's, there's a lot of that to it. So that's... Uh, I like that that you've got uh, confidence in what you're doing. I mean, uh, with especially well, and even the look of the cigars. Really, we could talk a little bit about the artwork on the band. It's uh, you're you're not shying away from uh, from trying to grab people's attentions with the look of these things. Um, I don't know how well these translate. Uh, the lighting is a little bit tough, but the bands really do pop. There we go. Logan Logan's showing it off because he's got the box there. Thanks, uh, Logan. Uh, yeah, I mean that's, hey, that's uh, what I'm good for. Yeah, I mean. <laughs> Just yeah, I mean the look of the of the uh, of the product is is something that's going to grab your attention just off the shelves. So uh, tell us a little bit about the um, the uh, influence behind the design. Cool. Just going to all the different lounges in the states. The one thing I've learned is that when a group of men sit inside a cigar lounge, we talk about. Religion. We talk about politics. We talk about women. We talk about anything and anything that is talk about things that are taboo, right? Yeah. We may For even sure. disagree. You and I may disagree. You know, all three of us may have a heated you know, argument sitting there. Bar. Where else can we actually do this? As soon as you step outside the cigar lounge, dude, you know, there's some guy who's going to ear hustle. You might offend him because of your political view. Or your religious view, or you said something that's sexual, that may offend someone. So, taboo is what I'm trying to get back to: is how men can be men again. <laughs> and my tagline is pretty much, you know, be yourself, don't apologize. You know, be yourself, don't apologize. I coin a new word, a new word. You gotta, gotta love this one, Oprah men. There's too many Oprah men as of today. <laughs> you know, that's I Logan. can't stand them. Dude, I don't watch Oprah. <laughs> Dude, did you get her? Did you get a list of books that you had to read? No, man, I ain't in Oprah's book club, dog. I think I did read one book that was <laughs> yeah, uh, Rob, exactly. No, but it was it was actually it was a really good book. Um, but I, I I read it before I realized that it was an Oprah book. But it had the sticker on the front, you know. It wasn't that wasn't why I bought it. <laughs> it, was, it was it was a recommendation from someone else. So I will admit that I read one book that was in the Oprah book choice thing. I don't even know what it is. But yeah. uh, anyway, I don't know if, if that makes me an Oprah man or not. But uh, but you know what? <laughs> I'm going to be who I am. I'm not going to apologize for it. So you That's know what, what I want to hear. Do you see how I did that? I brought, it, I brought it full circle. Be your, don't apologize because then I know what I'm dealing with. Yeah. You know? Now, one thing I will I say, though, I'm... when... Uh, when um, we first started uh, contacting each other about you know getting everything, uh, getting you guys to come on on the show and get some samples and everything like that. I did Google uh, taboo lifestyle. Yes, sir. I wasn't sure what the website was, and some interesting stuff came up that had nothing to do with your cigars. Yeah, I'm looking right now. <laughs> oh, so sign up I, for it. Sign yeah. up for it, Logan. <laughs> yeah. Oh, ish. Yeah. So be careful. Swingers, you, dog. You're better hey. off Googling taboo cigars than... I tell you what, buy a box and you get a free membership. <laughs> yeah, no kidding, right? Yeah, well, some of that stuff, I don't know. I mean, I'm not going to judge, but that's, some of that stuff wasn't really in my wheelhouse. But um, So we've had uh, we've got a bunch of questions here. Uh, we've got about two pages worth of questions, so I'm going to jump in uh, right after this. Uh, just remind everybody you're listening to Cigar Chat, brought to you live on CigarFederation.com. Broadcast around the world, the Armed Forces Radio Network. We're here with uh, Young from Taboo Cigars, talking about a little bit of everything. Um, Want to get into these uh, audience questions here. Um, let's see. We'll jump right in here from Fat Kid, <clears throat> who's actually here tonight, and he's he's uh, he's he's listening to the show live. So um, oh he says, uh, "Yeah, I wonder if he's wearing a Superman snuggie." Um, 
There you go. Let's see. Oh, you know, this I'm not is judging. A, <laughs> I, hey, I, I wore my Superman Snuggie on the show once. It makes me feel strong. It's got the little outline of all the big <laughs> muscles that I don't have, you know, like the six-pack. I mean, I've got one, but it's underneath. I keep it well hidden under a couple inches of uh, insulation, but uh, I like to keep warm. <laughs> Um, so he says, uh, his question here is, what made you decide to get into the cigar market at this time when there are FDA issues on the horizon and the market is flooded with new quality cigars competing for buyer's dollars and that uh, ever-elusive shelf space? Once again, I have no fear. I've been in the industry. I know how to get inside a shop. I know how to get in, get the piece of real estate. I know how to go about it. Whether it's you know, one cigar at a time for each retailer and consumer, if that's what it takes, that's what I'm going to do. Am I trying to – is this a you know, get-rich-quick scheme? Hell no. It's not. It's a lot of tenacity, patience, and working hard at it. There's no, there's no shortcut in life. You know, I, there is no shortcut. And the reason why I chose now, you know, as my mom would say, there's no better time. No better I can time think it and think it up. I can overthink it, and it's never going to happen. I, my best, in, I guess, analogy would be, you know, there's the famous statue of the, the thinker, right? There's a lot of people who's going to die with their dreams, right? <laughs> They're going to die with their dreams, or they talk about the dreams all the time. Well, me on the other hand, I'm the other statue. I'm up and running. I'm up and running. You, you can tell me you shouldn't do this at this moment. It's the worst time. You know what? I'm not worried about that. I'm not worried about the FDA. I'm not worried about regulation. Matter of fact, I can't wait until prohibition. Go ahead, bring it on. I want prohibition. <laughs> bring on prohibition. I Why do you say you. that? I don't know. Prohibition sounded like it sucked. I wasn't around for it, but it didn't sound like a good time. It sounded like what? a lot of people got arrested. <laughs> it hey. sounded like a good time to me. Speak. <laughs> Speak easy. Yeah, there you go. If uh, if there's um, if there's another prohibition, I'm moving to Paris. That's that's what everybody did back in the day. I'm just gonna, I'm just gonna keep doing it. Um, so we've got some uh, we've got some some chatter in the uh, in the chat room here. Um, <clears throat> people are looking for your website. It doesn't you guys don't have a website up yet? Is that that's something that's in the works? It's in the work. Uh, you know, well, once again, the guy who's doing my website, I have to say, he took me on as a client as a gift. To me, as a gift because he he does websites for Chipotle, Sears, you know, all these big oh. guys. But fortunate for me, and I have just. Be patient, you know. Yeah. Just have to, but it won't get the sex appeal that I'm looking for. <laughs> so that's so the website is is in the offing. Um, with uh, and the cigars, are they actually? I mean, since you just now are releasing everything, are they even on shelves yet? Did we lose them? Mm. Uh, we may have lost them. So, Logan, which one are you smoking? And you are the weakest link. Goodbye. <laughs> yeah, you might have to log back in, so we'll just keep chatting. I'm smoking the uh, the Sumatra. So it's the medium blend, um, and it's got a nice spice to it, and I'm pairing it with one of my favorite beers. That I'm not even going to try to say the name, but it's Aphrodite. That's I've talked about this a lot. Yes. That's what we've had on, uh, on um, sharing our sharing pairings. Our pairing. uh, it's, a cho it's a stout brewed with real cocoa and vanilla bean. Nice. Big, heavy beer. It's really good, man. Um, and the pairing is really, really nice. The spice from the cigar is offsetting the sweetness of the beer. They really do kind of highlight each other. Um, we're going to have some reviews coming up soon. But uh, You know you what I'm smoking? You're not, None of them. You're not smoking you're, anything. Well, well, no, I'm smoking a cigar, but I'm not smoking his. You want to know why, guys? Let me just tell you why. As Rob got sent this nice little sample pack of nice little samples, Logan did not. Logan got sent three boxes, and because he loves all of you out there so much, I did not crack into those boxes just so we can make sure that you fed heads got your dues. You get your prizes. Um, who scared him away? <laughs> I think, uh, yeah, I don't know. He was He's uh, young. Is that the local shop right down the street from me, actually? And I, I've done a show from there before. We did the show we did with George, with, uh, George Rico. You did? Um, we did that in the shop. We didn't, have any, we didn't have any connection issues, but it looks like he's just jumped back in. Back, we got the low rider <laughs> in the background. That's nice. So, um, that's, so we lost sorry about that. No, that's fine. I mean, the internet is an imperfect system. 
Um, and we can uh, we can thank Al Gore for that. Didn't Al Gore invent the internet? He did. He did. <laughs> he did. And he couldn't spell potato either. He invented no. That was um, no. That was uh, Dan Quayle. That was Dan Quayle. <laughs> yeah. uh, I'm glad we knew that because I never would have remembered it. So okay, good. Dan Quayle. That's good knowledge. Um, so where where did we leave off? We were talking about the website. And actually, the, my final question just before uh, we lost you there was. You know, everything is just like you said. You uh, everything came to you in the fourth quarter. You were pushing everything back to after the new year. Um, are the show, are the cigars even on shelves yet? Yes, they are. They I started off uh, in San Diego. Okay. And then I moved to um, toward the Orange County, then in L.A. Now, guess where I am? I'm in Walnut Creek. Right down and the I'm street. And I'm also in. Uh, yeah, there you go. So I'm doing it slowly, organically, grassroot like. Mm-hmm. I'm only concerned right now with 50 accounts. 50. That's it. Yeah. I'm not trying to over expand myself. Expand myself there. I just that's not important to me. Once again, I want these 50 50 accounts in the, you know California, and I just want to build the relationship. It gives me more time to spend time with the, the consumer and the retailers. It's it's so funny, man. Everybody that we have, and we have a lot of companies that, that are are relatively new come on the show, and that's one of the things that we like talking about is is the new stuff on the market. And everybody is, they get their foothold in Florida, and they get their foothold in Texas, and their foothold on the, uh, the southeast. Um, nobody gets their foothold in California. So I, I, I kind of like the fact that you're doing everything exactly opposite of what Pretty everybody much. else does. That's it. I kind of like that. I, I color outside the line. I do things my way. Frank Sinatra did it. I do it my way, too. Oh, uh, I tell you the reason why I believe this. Everybody start in the East Coast. You're right and never make it west of the Mississippi. I believe if I can conquer the west, I can own the rest. <laughs> Dude, did you go to like rhyming school or what? <laughs> you, were, you were an MC in your former life, I think. Apparently. Uh, did we lose him again? We might have lost him again. That sucks because this was just getting fun. I just uh, made a really great oh. comeback too. Oh, there oh, we here. go. Are you back? There you are. Okay. Yeah. Okay, good. So let me uh, let me kind of keep going through some of these questions here. One quick question: Where are your cigars made? I have a guess. I think they're made at Grand Habano, correct? It's a uh, Dominican. Uh, it's in a Tabacalera Cinco Estrella. Okay, so Grand Dominican Habano. Republic, Santiago. They're made by. Uh, it was the person who helped me blend the cigar was uh, Dr. Garl and also Milton. So Milton helped me uh, create the, uh, the cigar as well. And who is Milton? He's the guy who owns the factory. <laughs> okay. Uh, okay. Uh, yeah, you're looking for a Spanish name, though. His name is Milton. <laughs> <laughs> That's pretty awesome. When anybody talks about Milton, I just think of Office Space. Mm. Uh, you know, I went in, and I would throw my there's swing no, line. There's, there's no space. There's no, space. Thought, no thought. Um, anyway, uh, Milton. Okay, so I, I'm not familiar with that uh, with that factory. Um, so we'll have, to, we'll have to do some some research. Logan, are you familiar with it? I thought it was made at Grand Habano, but apparently not because I was just reading the side of the label and it says made by Garo, which I thought was a part of Grand Habano. But what do I know? Incorrect. Not Incorrect. At all. Although, although I will I will say that uh, Charlie on uh, Cigar Federation earlier was trying to tell me that your cigars were coming out of Nicaragua, and. I told him they were Charlie coming. Charlie know anything. Well, I, I I just feel good that I was right and he was wrong. So oh, you know what? You know what? It just, just I want to put a tag on it. It's a Hecho and Chino, <laughs> made in China. Oh, there you go. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, why not? Um, let's see. Let me get why through not? Some of these. Let me get through some of these. A lot of people are asking about the name. We kind of covered that. Um. Let me see. Okay, here's a good question. This we were going to get into this at one point. Um, this one's from uh, Timmy C. Um, he says, or Tim C. I guess. Uh, he says your logo kind of makes me think of the OSOK cigars when they uh, originally came out. The Edgar Hoyle, the original uh, release, had, a, had a, 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 a logo that was similar. Um, I, I can see that. Yeah, he was curious if they were somehow involved or if there was any crossover there. But no, yeah, both not. Marines. There you go, and there you, you go. can understand that. You know. Edgar was representing yet another warrior. You know, mm -hmm. we're talking about man up, be a warrior. You know, it's it's time to reach down and pack a check. That's what we're trying to tell you. Smoke, enjoy, be a man. So Don't make so, excuses. So what is the story with this guy on the band? I mean, he is uh, he's aggressive. That's what I want. Have you ever seen a 
a haka before? Um, no. A haka? No. A haka. That's it. It looks okay. like a Polynesian warrior. That's it, Logan. That is a Polynesian warrior. Oh, there you go. Look, you are so worldly. It's Dude, unbelievable. I am. I really am. You would never know. It's, it's, it's unbelievable. Unbelievable, but I knew him a little something about a little something. You, you, never, you never cease to amaze me, man. It really Dude, is. I can blow your mind, son. I, I think it's, it's just the bar. The, I've set the bar so low for you. You have, dude. You, you just keep stepping right over it. I make it too easy. I make it too easy. Um, let's see. Let me keep going through some of these questions here. Um, uh, let's see. Okay. This is a good question. This one's from uh, from Donald <clears throat> Cazero. Uh, he says, given that I'm not the most techno-savvy guy on the planet, uh, I attempted to find a source for your cigars without any success. So if I wanted to try one, how do I get them? Are there any places that you've... Because uh, I know Donald is... He's on the East Coast. He's, actually, he's up in Maine, I think. Dude, he is like... When you talk about Maine... Think about the farthest reaches of Maine where it costs an extra three dollars to ship him a package. That's what's that's what's on. You gotta pay extra to get the package. No, for reals. So are there are there are any of the shops, the, the California shops that you've been able to get into, uh, are any of them making your cigars available online that people around the country can get their hands on? That's what I wanna to be able to do is get first my fifty count and teach him, you know, that it's okay to go ahead and ship to people who are curious about my cigars. My website will also allow people to buy it, but unfortunately it's going to cost them a little more than mm -hmm. your retail shop. What I'm doing this you know, for the case, case of people who are curious about my cigar. That's about it. I'm not going to be reactive and say, you know, the guy from New York called me up and say, hey, I want 50 boxes. Sorry, I'm not ready for you yet. <laughs> so I have to be very disciplined and stick with integrity. I'm only concentrating in California at this moment. Those in the Midwest, East Coast, who wish to try it, contact the shop. And, of course, it's going to be on my website, so they'll list all the retailers and how they'll go about and contact that retailer to buy the cigars. And then, of course, I'm going to sell my cigars, too, on my website. But like I say, it's more. Okay. Do, we have, uh, do you have a, an ETA for the website, Manana? Uh, yeah, Manana. <laughs> manana, Manana, Manana. <laughs> so we'll, we'll, we'll look for the and it's it's taboocigars.com, correct? That's what the yes, URL. sir. Taboo cigars. Okay, so that's you guys will be able to find them on taboocigars.com, um, and yeah, there will be a list, um, and maybe at some point uh, in in the coming days, maybe I can get a list of the shops that you are currently in. We can make that available to our guys if they want to get their hands on some. They could do it that way, um, or maybe they'll win some tonight. Okay. Who knows? Um, here's another one from uh, from one of our favorites. Uh, and he works at a shop up in Oregon, so you're going to be making your way up there, too, pretty soon. Uh, this one's from The Nothing. Um, he says, uh, if you could choose one cigar, which, if you could choose one cigar to best represent your brand, which one would it be of the three? Oh, the one in my hand. <laughs> <laughs> Whichever one you're the smoking, one right? Aston. Whatever I'm smoking. But uh, honestly, I feel pretty proud of the, uh, the bronze one, the mild cigars. And the reason why I feel very proud of it is 60% of our cigar smoker are mild cigar smoker, right? The mild cigar smoker. Whoa, 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 whoa. What? Say it. <laughs> whoa, whoa, whoa. 60%. Whoa, 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 whoa. 60%. Hey, look, take it easy, man. 60%. 60% of people smoke mild cigars. cigars. Yes, I call really? it. That is bull. 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 Right. Where hey, are you doing not, your math? Yeah, where, where are you getting that number from? Where are you I'm getting curious. this number? I'm not challenging you. I'm just curious where that number comes from. I am. All right. <laughs> Actually, these uh, statistic comes out from uh, it came out from TA, from the really? retailer submitting uh, you know this sell sheet saying okay what are you know what are some of the cigars that you're selling on annual basis year to date. And that that sixty percent that just that does seem like a high number to me. Well, but, uh, from a statistical point of view, Rob, I'm gonna drop some knowledge here. Do it. If we're looking at TA, that how many? I think there's only like what, 40 or 50 stores in the TA, and these are very niche, old school, old guard yes. clubs. So if you went out and actually did a proper macanudo, yeah, a macanudo. <laughs> if you actually went a proper, I it, that number's just way, <laughs> way too high. Here's 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 what I'll, I'll chime in with this, Logan. I think we see. 
is we're online, we're in that uh, a younger generation, dare I say, of uh, of cigar yeah. smokers, and so we see the guys that want to smoke the powerhouse stuff, uh, the guys who have you know been smoking over the last five or six years when all the powerhouse stuff has been popular. So we see more of that. You know, we don't see a lot of the guys like Catfish who are smoking the okay. the um, the, uh, the milder stuff. So they're, they're, the truth probably lies somewhere in the middle. Of uh, of what we think, what we see, and what the TAA sees. I, that's just my guess. There you go, Rob. Always, always a what do they call you? Somebody who's uh, that always diplomatic. Works. Yeah, very diplomatic. <laughs> diplomatic, Rob. I, 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 no, I just I think I think there's some truth to that, though. Really, I mean, because we talk about some things like, for example, this, the the CYB, the uh, the community, the online community loved that cigar. It was very, very popular. It got tons of high ratings. You and I both liked it, but it Which didn't. One? CYB. Right. But it didn't do well in stores. It's just true. So I mean, it's true. But just look at all those cigars that released last year, for example. Can you name one mild cigar that was released last year? Nomad. That was really popular. The Nomad okay. Connecticut. But that's like no, that's a Connecticut Forte, son. It's ain't yeah, your daddy's Connecticut. It's still a mild cigar. That's a medium Connecticut. I don't know. I, I, I don't know. <laughs> Anyways, I'm just, I'm I'm just well, the cigar was pretty much going to represent, you know, your breakfast cigar. That's the reason why it's a bronze. Well, and, and to to kind of expound upon that a little bit, when you, if if I can give somebody, let's say I, I'm a, I'm a brand owner and I've got these three cigars. Let's okay. say I own Taboo Cigars. Let's just play uh, make make believe for a second. If I can hand okay. somebody my mild blend that doesn't have a ton of strength to it, but it's got a lot of flavor complexity, and I can get them to enjoy that, then you know they're going to enjoy the other two. There you go. Do you see? So that, I think there's a certain amount of merit to that as well. So that's just my thought. But uh, I haven't smoked the... Uh, I have not smoked the uh, Connecticut yet. I'm smoking the, uh, the silver right now, which is the uh, Sumatra, and I, I smoked one of the uh, Habanos. I think the Habano is going to be more in Logan's wheelhouse than mine. Um, I'm more of a medium okay. bo medium body or medium strength full body guy. I like a lot of flavor, but I don't like a ton of strength. And uh, the, not that the the Habano was too strong for me, but it had a certain flavor pro flavor profile that doesn't necessarily get right in my wheelhouse. The uh, Sumatra, on uh, the other I hand, is, the Sumatra on the other hand is right in there with it. And I'm pairing it with a nice chocolate stout, chocolate stout with vanilla bean. Very very good. Really enjoying it. Um, so let me, uh, Logan. Unless you have other questions, I'm gonna go. Uh, I'm gonna jump into some more of these audience questions here. Um, oh, and well, we had, we kind of covered this, but uh, this is a question from Nicole. Wow, Nicole, I am gonna jack up your last name. Googly goog. Googly eyes. <laughs> Googlamini. <laughs> Googlamini. She she posts questions a lot, and I don't think we ever get to them. So I want to make sure we got to some of her questions. Uh, she said, "I wanted to know if the face in your band." Was that of a Buddhist deity, but it's not. Um, it's not. Polynesian, wrong. Yeah. Well, Next question. But, but I, I don't know. Maori, New Zealand. Yeah, she was. She just wanted to know if, if you were just going for if it had some specific meaning to you, or if it was just kind of a, an aesthetic thing. It's more of a warrior thing. Bring yeah, out the inner warrior. It's it. So it is. It's a personal feeling for you, but it's also it, it, you like the the aesthetic uh, the aesthetic look Absolutely. of it. Absolutely. Uh, Dave Nichols chimes in with a very important question. Uh, he says, "Do you prefer your tonic with gin or vodka?" <laughs> you like to keep uh, it tonic. vodka. Uh, vodka. Don't tonic. Good vodka. Yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm more of a vodka, vodka tonic. Vodka tonic, tonic and a twist of lime. You know what I like to do? We, uh, my wife and I, <clears throat> we made this. Uh, we started making this cocktail. Live a taboo lifestyle. I don't know, like six years ago, and we make it every year when we're when we're decorating the Christmas tree. It's just a vodka tonic, and you squeeze a full, uh, like a clementine tangerine in there. Fantastic. Very. That sounds good. good. It is good. It's quite refreshing. And the problem is, you can have like seven of them before you realize it, and then and then it gets weird. Um, <laughs> but that's but that's when it's fun. Um, let's see uh, another one from Nicole. Um, she says here, says, it, seems, um, it seems like it's a trend with smaller boutique companies uh, is to focus more on small batch limited edition lines as opposed to developing long-term uh, production or core lines. 
What is your uh, personal, personal and professional feeling and opinion on this? So, okay. uh, to paraphrase, a lot of uh, smaller companies have come out with a ton of limited edition, small batch this, you know, you know, we're only releasing you know, a couple hundred boxes of this, that, and the other, as opposed to you know, long-term core lines that they're preparing for years in advance. From, from your personal and professional preference, what, what do you feel about those? Those two different. I'm all about uh, the core line. This what you see right now is my core line. It's not a small batch. It's not so limited. It's my. This is your daily smoke. You know, these are the daily smokes, where you're able to find it and it be consistent. I want to be able to have it available all the time. After several, you know, a couple of years, you know, after a couple of years where I've um, penetrated the market and saturated the market in my, you know, according to my business plan, then. And only then it'll be okay to come out with limited edition or you know small batches. Okay, so when uh, <clears throat> when you're talking about uh, you know consistency of the blend and consistency of construction and things like that, how involved are you um, with the uh, production process? I mean, how often do you get down to the to the factory? And, and because a lot of these guys who are uh, in a, a similar position as you are very hands on with their um, with their production. So I'm curious how involved you are. I'm very hands on. I have to do what I do best and let the professional do what they do best. They roll cigars, let them roll cigars. My, what's more important to me is relationship, getting into the shop, making sure it's done right, and I'll get down there often enough to make sure that there's, the cigars are, are consistent, construction-wise, mm -hmm. quality-wise, etc. But this is my core line, so it's not that difficult to duplicate, for my, you know, to do it year in, year out. Sure. It's, not a, it's not a small badge. It's not a boutique. Okay. Um, it's interesting that you use the word boutique there. Say that it's not a boutique cigar. What to you? What What is your definition of boutique cigar? Because that, that's that's a really loose term. We use it a it lot. It is a loose term, and everybody yeah, has we, a, different, we uh, a different feeling. But you you went out of your way to say it's not boutique. So I'm curious why. Because my fear of saying boutique is um, it may not last long. It's a splash. Hmm. You know, it's here today, gone tomorrow. I don't want to be considered gone tomorrow. I want to be here. Today and then tomorrow and the near day after. So that's my only concern is not getting trapped in the. That's my definition. Okay. No, I'm just curious. I mean, yeah. Logan, I don't think we've ever had anybody really define boutique that way. No. And we've never had anyone on the show that was in kind of looked like Darth Vader either. <laughs> hey, Darth Vader. Hey, Darth Vader. I'm not your father. I'm not your no, father. You're not. <laughs> no, you're not. Darth Vader's a badass man. Looking like Darth Vader is not a problem. Um, yeah, I was I was born in the late '70s, so I'm all about Star Wars. And yes, I'm very very excited for the new movies that are coming out. They're gonna break my heart because I think they're gonna be fantastic, and they're gonna break my heart like the last ones did. But whatever, I'll so. still be there. I'll be there at midnight. I won't be dressed up, but I'll be there at midnight to see. Oh the come movie. on, do it right. Well, do I, I don't know if if my wife will do the. Uh, the uh, Princess Leia as Jabba's uh, prisoner thing, then maybe I'll dress up. We'll see. Um, <laughs> I'm sure we could talk her into that. Um, so uh, another question here. This one's from Charlie. Um, this is, uh, do you, uh, oh, and we kind of touched on this. Uh, do you play a large part in the blending process? And do you have any plans? Absolutely. To do it? So, so with the, the initial blending process, it wasn't like you went to the blenders and to Milton, remembered his name, and said, this is, I kind of want, you know, a blend, like mild, medium, and full, and just go ahead and just see what you can do. I mean, you were more hands-on than no. that? No. Actually, I wrote exactly what I wanted on it. Oh. Very detailed, saying, this is the tobacco I want, these are the leaves I want, and this is how I want it rolled. Slightly loose. I don't want it so dense. So it was very detailed and specific. So when, of course, these massive blenders, they came back with different cigars, saying, hey, this would go well for you. No, 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 this is not what I asked for. This is exactly what I asked for. So I want it done it my way. No, I it's I uh, I can appreciate that. I mean, it's you're putting. <clears throat> I mean, this is you. You're putting the money up. You're putting your face out there. This is your brand. So uh, this is all so, me. So of course you're going to want to be uh, involved on both ends. Logan, I'm talking a lot. Feel free to jump in whenever you want, man. No, I'm just throwing in witty quips every now and then. <laughs> yeah, I, I'm going out of my. It's a throwing, chicken flu. Yeah, it's a chicken. It's, 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 it's a chicken flu. Bird flu. Like, is that swine flu? <laughs> you gotta watch Logan, out for that swine flu. <laughs> Logan's more likely to get the swine flu, I think. 
Uh, uh, ha, 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 ha. That's probably true. I saw what you did. Now, all I got to say is just go watch Contagion on a flight to India. Ooh. That'll put everything in perspective. That's a horrible idea. It <laughs> was a horrible idea. I didn't even want to touch anything in my own house after that, let alone, oh, man, uh, airplane bathroom. Oof. No. That's just horrible. Um, <laughs> uh, let's see. Uh, okay, so this is, well... We kind of touched on that already. I'm scrolling through these questions here. There's a ton of them. Um, let's see. Um, we talked about the name a lot. Sorry, I'm kind of dragging my feet. Logan, jump in whenever you want. Yeah, I'm good. Um, <laughs> <laughs> so, unreal, uh, unreal. No, I, I, I do got, have a question. I got, I got a question. Yeah, so jump in. you said something before was very interesting, is that you said that you know, you're focusing on you know, core lines and that you know, you don't want to be necessarily boutique, like a flash of the pants, as I would say. So totally get that and respect that. But you also said that, you know, you kind of just set it up and let it run because the tobacco doesn't vary from year to year. Oh, uh, from my understanding, is tobacco varies very much from year to year, and almost have to reblend almost every year with different vintages, and why so many companies will do different vintages of the same cigar because the tobacco will be different. It'll be less rain or more rain or not enough rain or whatever. So why I mean why do you think that your cigar you just kind of set it up and just let it truck along? Well, here's the thing. I looked at several different manufacturers, uh, Padron for instance, you know, Macanoodle or Fuente, they have a core line, very consistent. Yes, it will vary from year to year with a slight difference of water, you know, rain, environment. That was a slight variation, but majority of us, you know, can we will be able to pick it up? Is the question. Pick up the small nuisance of like, oh, last year that vintage Come on now, that because it's poor rain, most of us would not be able to recognize that. And not to say that you know we're not cigar aficionado, but it's such a small and micro you know change. That's to be expected, you know. That's to be expected. So we all understand that. Got it. Okay. So I mean, with the, you know wanting to go out and, and get in the cigar business. I mean, you're tack you said you're currently in 50 stores. Or your goal is to get into 50 stores. My goal is to get into 50 stores in the West Coast. 50 That's stores, it. okay, on the West Coast. Got it. Um, so, I mean, I'm just curious. Is like, you know, from a from a financial standpoint, like, why why 50? Do you know what I mean? Like, I feel like if I if I was starting a cigar company, yeah, I wouldn't want to get into 500 year one because I probably couldn't keep up with the production. And I wouldn't be able to scale it. Totally understand. But 50 seems like such a low number. I mean, there's companies that come out and start and can get into 50 such overnight, a, right? So why why such a low number? Correct. Such a low number. First, it allows me to get more time FaceTime with my customer and my retailer and to improve on how I can make it better. Any hiccups, anything that I need to change, you know, that objectively I need to change, I have the time and ability to change. Lock up my 50 accounts before I move to the next, you know, Midwest to open another 50 account. Lock that up and then move up to the East Coast. And then finally another 50 accounts. 200 accounts total in the United States. That's all I'm interested. 200 accounts, that's it? That's it, sir. Because I was told by a very wise man in the cigar industry, I'm not going to name his name, but he has tattoos. I said yeah. that, I, go, I asked him one time and I said, hey, you know, you hear people talk about, oh, I'm in the 300 counts, and 500 counts, whatever. And I go, what is the number where you're starting to make cheddar? Like, you're, you're, you're doing good. Like, you're not worried about paying your POs to your factory. Where's that kind of sweet spot? And he's like, well, he goes, you want to be around 500 accounts. So if you're only going for 200, how are your 200 accounts going to be different than his 500 accounts to get you to making money millionaires? I don't know. We might have lost him. Oh man, that was a great question. It was a good question. It was. Oh, I got, he got cut off, Logan. Okay. Where did? Logan. What's the last thing you heard me say? Uh, <laughs> 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 All right, you played that pretty well. You played that well. I got burned. That was pretty good. Uh, so my question was: Is that you only want two hundred accounts? I asked a, a good friend well-known in the cigar industry, I said, where's the point where you can make, you know, you're making Genders. good scratch. Exactly. He said 500 yeah. accounts. Well, your goal right. is 200. So how mm -hmm. are your 200 accounts going to be different than, say, his 
500 accounts to get you to the point where you're financially viable in the business? 200 accounts, and every year I look at the year-to-date purchase and how can I improve on the year-to-date for the following year. So if they're buying X amount, how can I help th- that particular retail shop increase 20%? That's the way I'm going for it. Because the more accounts you have, you have to hire more people, more, more people in the warehouse, just more of everybody. I'm not looking to be an over or five babysitter relationship and nurture the relationship. Got it. And and last question here before we go to the after dark segment. So yeah, I mean I understand. I don't want to I don't want to babysit you know people either. I mean I have to set babysit all of our mods all the time. Mm-hmm. Um, uh huh. So my question would be is that you know two hundred shops that's great, but I mean that's just I don't know. I mean, it's just not a lot of uh, footprint, right? So, yeah, I mean, you can still grow your accounts. And I totally get the understanding of once you get in a place, you want to land and expand, right? So you want to go from maybe three facings, maybe doubling or tripling that. So I totally get that. Um, I mean, are you planning on selling online? No, I'm not planning to sell online, nor am I having a relationship with a distributor here in the States either. Okay, so that, okay. All right. He's, I mean, he's got very specific goals, man. I mean, you got very specific goals, man. But I mean, I, I mean, more power to you. If you don't want to sell online, you want 200 accounts. Hey, and you're successful, man. More power to you. God love you. But if you're going to get cigars out of the door, and you can't touch the, you know, I guess you don't have all the smoking people, but the 12 to 13 million people that smoke cigars, you are you're only hitting a, such a small amount of the market. I I don't know. Anyways, we could talk economics. That is, that is true. I, it's a small market, and that's what I want to concentrate is the small market. Everybody else is concerned about trying to take the big will. You know, trying to take. A, I figure I just want. I'm going to be the smallest fish on the minnow in in this big ocean. There's sharks and there's whales. I'm concerned about. You know what I am? I'm a freaking beluga. I want to make the biggest splash. You are a beluga. What I you, am a beluga. What you want to be, though, is the lionfish. Because it's, I mean, they're kind of cool looking, and nobody can mess with a lionfish. You eat a lionfish, you die. No, you want to be a puffer fish, dog, because you look all cute and cuddly, <laughs> and then them spikes <laughs> come out, and then you get all big, and just mess people up. When uh, I had a, a, a saltwater fish tank. I had a big saltwater fish tank when I was younger, and I had uh, <clears throat> a puffer fish. I had it forever. It's a porcupine puffer. He's, they've got the really big eyes, you know? And he'd always look at me when I'm in the room and everything. And he never puffed up. And then I bought uh, another fish that came in and kind of attacked him. And he puffed up once, and then he died. I was so sad. I was so sad. Logan, you touched a chord with me there. Sorry, dude. It was a, it's a deep emotional scar. But uh, I know we're, we're right up against the end, so we're going to have to wrap up our AFRN segment for now. Um, Young, thank you for joining us. I really did have a good time. Uh, we had some connectivity issues, but uh, it, was, it was a lot of fun chatting with you. Uh, and you know, talking about these blends, and, and uh, you know, best of luck to you getting getting that foothold on the West Coast, and um, you know, hopefully we can touch base with you again in another six to eight months, and hear that you're in those 200 stores, and, and now you're pushing for the 500 that Logan seems to think that you have to be in. So uh, <laughs> I think you have to be. I'm just going on. I, I mean, we're talking about going out. I get it. And, you know, going out and evaluating the market and stuff, and I mean, you just want to make that make that cheddar. Hey, man, if, if you ain't making money, it ain't worth doing. No, really do appreciate it, Young. Thanks for hanging out with us. Uh, guys, you can find TabooCigars.com is on the way, but it's Taboo Cigars everywhere else, right? Facebook, Twitter, and all that. Facebook, Taboo Twitter. Cigars. Yeah. Taboo Cigars. So that's where you can find and them. Instagram. And Instagram, exactly. Um, guys, appreciate you hanging out. Cigar uh, chat here on CigarFederation.com. Thank you for tuning in. Everybody out there in the AFRN world, thank you for everything that you do. Keep your head down. Stay safe. And we will catch you next week. Logan, who do we have next week? I think we have uh, Oliva cigars coming on. I next think week. you actually, yeah, you worked some magic on that one. Yeah, we're we've been, have, they've been uh, evading us, and you yeah, made it happen. Good so that'll be coming off their twenty uh, second, their uh, cigar aficionado uh, cigar of the year. So that'll be fun to talk about. Uh, really do appreciate it, guys, and we will catch you next week. Everybody have a good weekend. Stay safe. Thank you. And we're fucking back, people. Yeah, now now is when you can say oh, shit, bitch, you. cock, yeah, balls, we can say cock stuff, balls. Yeah. Cunt, whatever. Yeah, and you, you don't really need to celebrate it. But yep, you, baby. <laughs> so you're awesome powers. Uh, it, it, it's, 
for a gratuitous, uh, you know, profanity. One thing I've noticed about Young, I've, I've chatted with him a couple of times on the phone because I had to explain that Logan pussed out on last week's show. I didn't puss uh, out. I was fucking sick, you jackass. And, uh, and um, you've got a lot of personality, man. I can see that going into – it's been tough with the show because with, with the, uh, the intermittent internet, but uh, I can see that going out and uh, if I were in the shop and I, had, I didn't know anything about your cigars and you handed me one and we smoked one and chatted, I definitely remember you. You've got a lot of personality. That's for sure. So, um, Logan, we got some giveaways here, right? What do we got? Um, just like I was saying earlier, it's because I'm such an, an awesome, hey. awesome guy. I did not even open these boxes. So, uh, we've got... You got a box of each? I sure do. So, so how, we, how do you want to do it? Rob, I thought you put on the page that you were going to pick people solely off questions. I put that every week, and then you just end up doing whatever the hell you want to do. No, 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 but you said I'm serious this time, guys. I'm serious. I did. I did. Okay, well, then, uh, Logan, you banter, well, for, banter for a little <laughs> while while I find some winners. Banter. I don't give a crap. Banter, and I'll pick, uh, I'll pick banter. some Banter. That, I'll pick some winners here. Looking for. All right, uh, so bantering. So, like, let me ask you. So we, we kind of touched on this a little bit, I think, but... Didn't get into it. So you knew okay. Pepin when he was rolling at, you know, Tropical. Um, before, I actually think it was even Casa Fernandez. Um, so you know that, but you you said you work for companies. I mean, so have, have you actually, have you, were you on the actual production side of the house, or was it more the, the operation side of the house with, you know, the sales, the marketing? I mean, where, where does your core experience lie in the cigar industry thus far? Um. When I started, like I said, I started from pretty much from the floor. Started all the way through, you know, from sales shop. You know, I had a cigar lounge, had a uh, distributor uh, company, distribution company. And on top of that, you know, marketing, help marketing a lot of these uh, manufacturers. I also helped blend in a lot of different cigars for different companies. I did this so that I could personally experience what it's like, you know, not completely, but what it's like to be in, you know, in their shoes. But like I said, what happened to a broker, you know, a cigar broker, when they retire? There's nothing left for us, you know. There's nothing That's there true. for us. We don't, we don't own the company. Uh, if let's say here's an example. Let's say I represent a company. There's a company recently that got sold, right? If you've been working with that company for the last 10, 20 years and it got sold, what do you get out of it? Nothing. Well, unless you, you know, had stock they, in it. They, it's nothing tangible. We lose him again? Uh, I think Wait, maybe. He stopped. Oh, the video just caught up. Oh, there he is. Okay. We didn't lose him. We're good. All right. So yeah, I so picked... We, we kind of lost you there a little bit. Um, Logan, I picked one, two, three, four, five, six, seven winners. Is that good? Close enough. All right. So winners have to email Logan at logan at cigarfederation.com with taboo lifestyle um, slash swine flu slash pussy juice in the uh, <laughs> Jesus, in the uh, subject line. I'm going swine flu. Uh, and the winners are, in no particular order, actually I picked eight. I beg your pardon. That's fine. Um, the winners are, my pen broke, uh, Fat Kid, because he asked the first question and it was a good one. Uh, Tim C seventy one, Donald Cos, oh, the guy in Maine. Oh, I gotta pay more for shipping. Thanks, Rob. Uh, <laughs> Nicole G. I'm just going with Nicole G because I really screwed up her last name. She had Alex, dark hair. Um, like in, black in or very dark hair. In her picture, I think she does. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. And uh, Alexander Martinez, big winner. Bob Dog. Just Bob I love, Dog. I love his avatar, dude. He's, yeah, I love like, it too, man. He's, got, he's got his head shaved. He's got a big gray beard. He's got a huge cigar in his mouth, and it doesn't look like he's wearing a shirt. <laughs> it's really aggressive. So he's got a he's a winner. Uh, Joel, just Joel, like Cher, he's just Joel. And um, hold on, I had one more, and I, and I lost him. Oh crap! Oh, Michael Allison. Those are the winners. And you got to email me in the next ten minutes. Like, probably a no more than an hour, because I'm going to ship these things out probably well, early tomorrow. 
they've, they've got time to email you. They're, if they don't, if they don't email you in the next hour, they they won't. They'll go out in the next shipment. But just or to, uh, go out. yeah, maybe not. So fat kid, Tim C seventy one, Donald Cosman. I always mess up his name. Nicole G, Alexander Martinez, Bob Dog, Joel, and Michael Allison are the winners tonight. And you know why I love Fat Kid is because the the subject line taboo lifestyle, swine flu slash pussy juice. He he he, he, <laughs> he's, he filled all the criteria there. That's and if you're still listening, we'll do a giveaway podcast wise. If you're listening on the podcast, you can email me Logan at Cigar Federation. Yeah, podcast winners only. Yeah, podcast winners only. And trust me, I know if you were here, so don't fuck around. Um, for the next week ending, what will that be, Rob? Uh, the 22nd. No, nah, let's call it the 21st because I'm going to ship other stuff on the 22nd. By the 21st, okay. there you go. Because I never forget about my podcast, people. We can't. We can't. And then we we'll can't. have. We're global, man. And we've still got some. Uh, after that, we'll still have some stuff left over. Um, to do some uh, giveaways on the site too, I think at some point maybe we'll uh, make you uh, sign up and, and like our YouTube channel or something. Yep. Cool. So that uh, that takes care of the giveaways. Um, Young, it was been a it's been a pleasure chatting with you, man. It really has. I'm sorry that the internet wasn't working. Um, give uh, give yeah. Bird a, give Bird a bunch of shit about his internet, man. He needs to step up. Yeah, from absolutely. That, he needs to step up from that dial-up shit. That's not getting it done. You gotta let him know. Gotta I'll let him know. definitely relay that message. No, yeah, yeah. Tell uh, tell Bird we uh, we all uh, tell Bird that I said what's up because nobody else knows him. But um, yeah, I'm is that come down four there. cigars? Yeah, yeah. I love yeah. that dude, man. No, he he loved the collective, dude. Every time I go there, I bring him a collective. The, He's a uh, good guy. Uh, young, the collective was a cigar that was uh, blended just for our community. Um, oh, awesome. By uh, by the guys with Ezra Zion, and it came out of uh, Casa Fernandez, and I bring. Okay. Every time I go down there and visit with uh, Bird, I always bring him one because I know he likes those. But uh, um, no, best of luck to you, man. We'll catch up with you in the coming months and uh, and see what's going on. But really, do appreciate you taking the time to hang out with us. Well, thank you very much, guys. Yeah, enjoy your, the rest of your time in the Bay Area. What other shops are you going to visit while you're up here? Yeah. Uh, Where is West Mission. Coast? Um, West Mission. Coast. It's uh, yeah, go oh ahead. God, I don't even know the address. So. It's in the San Jose area. Okay, yeah, that's why I, ne I never get down to the South Bay. But uh, Mission Pipe, there's Mission Pipe's a great shop. Um, yeah, that's a good pipe. Yeah, yeah, yeah Donna's a sweetheart. She's yeah, they, a sweetheart. they do a they do a good job. I went down to a Tatuaje event down there, and they had a full spread. Like yeah. they had egg rolls and like food and barbecue and and drinks and everything. They they do it right. So they they've got a great shop down there. So. No. Uh, best of luck to you, man. Jesus. And uh, he is just a cigar queen. Yeah, yeah, for sure. But uh, yeah, take care, travel safe, and uh, and stay in touch, man. We'll uh, we'll we'll be following uh, Taboo Cigars, and, and hopefully everything works out for you. Guys, appreciate you hanging out uh, with us. Cigarfederation.com. Next week we'll be back with Oliva Cigars. So that'll be a fun show. Uh, we've got some uh, we've got some fun shows coming up. Actually, we've got. Uh, some some companies that we haven't had on before. We got your boy. Uh, we've got uh, Oliva Cigars. We got uh, Premier Mundo. Sean's coming back on the show. I uh, think Casada, which I'm pumped about. Casada Cigars coming out. We got Terrence. I think Terrence is going to come on, but I'm not I'm not exactly positive with that yet. And uh, Jordan Alexander, the third, which is a, a company I'm not familiar with, but Casada makes their blinds as well. So it'll be interesting to talk to them. So uh, really do appreciate it, guys. Everybody have a good weekend and uh, stay safe. And we'll catch up with you next week. Adios, bitches.